Welcome everyone to a new tutorial. This is the Triple Rosebud Mandala. This is based on a design by David Ander. He showed this to me on the Facebook page and I just love this design. It's got this really great optical illusion of three different squares stacked on top of each other. So we're going to do this in these colors that were based on the colors for my wedding. This is me 28 years ago. I, uh, our colors were green and sort of this beautiful rosebud pink. So that's our color, our color scheme for today. We're going to do this on a 10 by 10 canvas, which I painted black with the Martha Stewart satin. And now we're going to draw our grid. This is the part that everybody is curious about. It's very easy. First, you're just going to use your uh, charcoal white pencil to draw a line from corner to corner. And then because this is a 10 by 10 canvas, you'll be measuring 5 inches and making a mark on each of the four edges. And then you'll be connecting those two marks. And this forms the basic grid. Just like that. Now we're going to connect those two 5 inch marks again, only in a diagonal. Now we'll be measuring an inch and a half from the corner along the grid line and making a mark. And do that at each corner. And then you'll be connecting those dots. Now we'll be measuring again from the corner, this time 3 inches on that same line and making a mark at the 3 inch mark. And do that on each corner. and then connect those. And then just to help you visualize it, you're going to take away the lines that you really don't need for this design. We'll be leaving the basic guidelines on to help keep things symmetrical and straight, but you can take away the extra lines and it just helps you see the, uh, the optical illusion of the square on top of a square on top of a square if you take away the extra lines. So I'm using a damp Q-tip to take those off. Now this is a completed one. I'll be making a copy of this and I'm just showing you the paint list using the design here. We'll be using the Americana Red Barn which is, is not quite as bright a red as some of our others. And then the Martha Stewart Wine, this uh, lovely deep pink. And then the Pink Taffeta is a pearl paint, and we'll be using that. Here is the Americana Honey Brown. We're using tones that are really more subdued than some of our other mandala work. And the Golden Fluid Iridescent Gold Fine. The Deco Art Festive Green Metallic. It's kind of an olive green, very old-fashioned looking. And then uh, we'll be using the Martha Stewart Granny Smith. It's a very bright chartreuse. We'll be using that for some small dots. And then the Martha Stewart Lily Pad to mix in, and the Americana Green Beret will be our darker green.
and also the Martha Stewart Gold Mother of Pearl. This is a new paint that I haven't used before and it's got a, a beautiful uh, sheen to it that was the exact color of my wedding dress, sort of a candlelight color. So I'm putting these in a large palette and what I'm doing is mixing up three values of each color. So I've got three shades of red, three shades of green, and three shades of brown to uh, make these pink roses and their green stems. And then I've also got white in there as well. Cover that up with a damp paper towel and I'll show you what tools we'll be using today. A lot of people have been asking how these tools compare just with their sizes. So I've got the Pittsburgh set and the set from Traveling Kindness side by side and I will be holding them up to show you which ones that you can use that end up being the same size. So for our first dot we're going to be using the largest tool in each set and you can see that the Pittsburgh one is quite a bit smaller but if you load it up with paint twice it will come out the same size as the one from the uh, Traveling Kindness set. And that will give us our first dot. So this is the smallest tool in the Traveling Kindness set and this is the corresponding set from the uh, or tool from the Pittsburgh set and we'll be putting a red dot on each of the guidelines using that tool Now I'm using that wine color. I mixed in a little bit of titanium white with it because it was a little bit too thick and I didn't want it to peak. This is the next tool. This is the second tool in the uh, set from Ginger at Traveling Kindness and then the corresponding set from the Pittsburgh set. and putting another wine dot in here in between the guidelines and then I'm putting two small red dots in between these this is the fifth tool in the traveling kindness set and then the corresponding tool from the Pittsburgh transfer punch set and I mixed up the pink taffeta with a little bit of a titanium white just to give it a little more uh, opacity. This is the sixth tool in the set with its corresponding metal tool. And we're putting in the honey brown this time. And you'll see that I left some space there because I know I'm going to be uh, putting in two pink dots in between those. And then I'm going to be using this tool to make a uh, iridescent gold dot at the end of that trying to center that in between the guidelines and then I'm going to be walking those dots and I wanted to leave enough room so here's the iridescent gold and we are going to finish walking the dots in the pink taffeta Here's our next tool, the 316th, and I'm putting in a very light brown here. This is uh, almost a cream color. I mixed up the honey brown with the titanium white to give me a very light shade. And that is the third largest tool in the uh, Traveling Kindness set there. And again I left some space because I wanted to walk dots all the way around this and these are all the same size. Back to the 316th tool. I'll be making uh, an off-white, that cream color again at the end of that. a dot on either side in that same cream color and 
And the combination of the gold and the brown and the white and the cream is it's very nice, very old-fashioned looking. And then we're using the honey brown to walk the dots to complete this petal. This is the second to the largest tool in the Traveling Kindness set and then its corresponding one from the Pittsburgh set. Now we're going to this olive green. Put a large dot in there in between those white petals. And then I'm using that very chartreuse Granny Smith to walk dots halfway around that. And if your paint doesn't pull out as much, you may be able to walk all the way around. I was right up against the edge there, so I just stopped halfway. Put in a couple of the chartreuse dots in that empty space. And back to this size tool here, and we're going to be adding the green beret at the end of that row. Trying to make sure that is centered in between the guidelines. And then adding the same green beret on either side of that. And the smaller dots. And then I'm using the festive green metallic to make a triad on the end of the other row. And I ran out of space um, on the flat sides there, so I used a smaller tool to put the third dot in that area. There's my smaller tool to get that third dot in there, because I want to make sure that I'm not actually on that white guideline, because those are going to be dotted white. Now I'm mixing a little of the lily pad with the Granny Smith to give me a, a fourth shade of green. This is a brighter green. And I'm going to finish walking those dots. It's a really neat effect when you walk the dots halfway in one color and then finish off with a different color. So now I'm putting the iridescent gold in the far corner of that top square. Not quite touching the edges of the corner. I left a little bit of space there. And I will uh, walk around those in the iridescent gold. And just judge how much space you have left here. It won't be exact as mine because a lot depends on the consistency of your paint. It, you can have a larger dot or a smaller dot and you'll wonder why why don't I have the same spacing as Kristen does and that's just because of the the differences in the thickness of paint and how much it pulls out. So now I'm using the cream color again to walk a second row around that just getting as close as I can to that olive triad and finishing off those corners. Now I'm using the titanium white and my smallest tool to uh, make little white dots on all of these square guidelines. Just be patient. I'm, I'm doing it fast here because of I, I sped it up in the editing just so you could see it. The main thing is I'm doing three dots and then I'm reloading and then three dots and reloading. And it's okay if your dots are not all exactly the same size. The main thing you want is to have consistent spacing. Because that is what your eye really notices when you step back and look at this. I'm going to dry that with the blow dryer to make sure I don't smudge it. And we're going to get back to putting on some color. So we're going to work on the next square now, putting in a red dot on the guideline right next to the first square and we'll be walking red dots around that up to the edge of the square and 
and then another row in the wine color. And then the next row will be in the honey brown. you can see I'm just reloading that just to make my dot a little bit bigger so I don't have to get another tool out I'm kind of lazy that way <laughs> and now the final row in the green beret and I'm just being very careful here I don't want to touch that white line at all so I'm making sure I don't load up too much paint on that and I'm snugging it right in there in the corner without touching the brown row or the white row and it's a little tricky just have to make sure you have the right amount of paint on your tool. And if you don't think you have enough space, just use a smaller tool. So those four petals are done. And we're going to start working on the third square. Again, starting with the red, we're going to walk around in wine. I'm going to walk around in brown. Then I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm putting two medium sized dots in the cream color and then I'm going to walk halfway around on either side. And then I'm going to put in two of the dark green dots. And then walk the other direction back toward the middle. In the lighter shade of green. two little tiny green dots in the open space and do that on the other corner as well all the way around so first the cream dots walk dots around those halfway and then the green dots and walk halfway the other direction And then I'm filling in each corner there on those with the iridescent gold. Just adding a final little gold dot there to fill up the space if I can. And then I will be ready for the fourth row again starting with the red walking around in wine then walking in brown and then the green and then I think I skipped a step I think my my uh, card did not record that final step there doggone it but you can see it as you look at it here and now I'm doing some top dots starting with the pink taffeta and then this beautiful scallion pearl I really like to use the Martha Stewart uh, pearl paints for top dots because they're very plump, they have a lot of elasticity, and they stand up well when they're dry. It gives the, paint a, the, the painting a lot of texture. So I've got my first set of top dots on there and putting that scallion on top of the white. I'm going to put some uh, festive green metallic on this lighter shade of green. And then I decided to use this golden fluid, very, very deep 
forest green as a tiny little top dot in a very glossy paint just to give it uh, a little bit of an eye look there. And you can see I'm just zooming in on some of this so you can see how the corners are working out and what the colors look like here with their top dots. And I noticed that I had a couple drips of paint. So I used a Q-tip and just some of the black satin that I originally started with to cover up the drips because they were bothering me. <laughs> so now I'm going back with my final top dots after I let those dry, putting a lighter shade of green on top of a couple of the end petals of the, the darker green. And then I'm putting a medium green on top of the olive kind of going backwards here. And this is that, that gold Martha Stewart Mother of Pearl. I'm using that on the brown dots and also on the pink dots. And it's, it's just so beautiful when it dries. It has a little bit of a gold rim around the edge of it. It's kind of a, a magical effect. I just really love this paint. So just finishing with a couple more of this, this beautiful shade of green. I'm putting that on a couple of the corners here and I'm adding a little bit of that mother of pearl on top of the gold. And now I'm getting off the guidelines with a damp q-tip after my paint has dried. Making sure there are no guidelines visible. And then I'm going to finish it with the Kamar varnish. Take it outside and spray it and it will be all done. And you can see how that paint is standing up when it's dry. Beautiful effect with those pearl paints. And we're all done. I want to thank David again. Go and visit his Facebook page. It is in the comments.